Um, I was shooting, this is some tie over from another object I was filming, I was just doing tests with the camera. And here at the very end, I, uh, I was zooming in and out a few times. I, I, I stopped filming for a little bit because I was catching a lot of insects and bugs flying around. There went one, and maybe a bat or two. But uh, this thing can really see there was another bat. Background stars really well on night vision. And while I was doing some tests with a camera, I all of a sudden saw an object. That's not it. That's just a star I'm looking at there. I was doing some more references to just try to see how well it could lock the camera. See, so you can see good back shots of background stars there all around it. Those are stars, no planets. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember what star that is right there because I don't remember where I'm looking at at that moment. But uh, that was near Cassiopeia over there. I'm looking to the north northeast. Now, in a little bit here, all of a sudden, you can see a time shift because. I stopped filming for a little bit. I saw another object and I thought I had the record button on and I accidentally hit it. And then I turned it back on. Uh, that's just a triangle of stars. And you should see it here pretty shortly. And there went another bug flying through the screen. I think I may have caught a meteor or two here. But at the very end, when I get, uh, there's going to be a little delay here in a second. Yeah, I remember I picked those. There goes another bug. <laughs> Night orb, whatever you want to call it, and most of the time they're insects. Uh, the camera is sensitive to the infrared spectrum of light, so if you use night vision, obviously it becomes like somewhere between a generation one and generation two night vision device, which is that's why I like those older Sony's. Of course, now the ones you get are so expensive, you can't get anything with them. For the hoop without spending over a thousand dollars, but the night vision's gotten even uh, better. Except people look green. All right, here we go. Now you can see the object briefly. Uh, it's moving across the sky, and there you can see, no sound. It was just a black triangle. Uh, heading, I was heading north, northeasterly, and again, I'm saying in my. What happened is I accidentally stopped recording. I had a pretty good shot of it there in the first and towards the end. But it's, uh, again, there was no sound, no engine sounds, no jet engines, no nothing. No, You couldn't see the tail lights. Normally you look at a plane, you can see the tail light uh, structure or some kind of light or something that lights it up. And I'll try to get in a better position here to see it in a second. But the problem is I've got all these security lights from across the street where they're building the school. And I was trying to shoot right between two of them. And there's the object again. Um, I it's my theory, and again, this is up to again up. People can make their own opinion. I think it's part of the test program that they're actually experimenting with some of these new high tech, uh, super high high tech hardware, and they're testing it out of uh, Kingsville Naval, Naval Air Station down here. Just like Pensacola has also been rumored to have test programs there, I believe that's what's going on, and they're using the space over the valley as a perfect. Okay, I'm gonna stop here because I'm shooting Orion there. That's just a shot of Orion's belt. I wanted to again see how well the camera could get background stars for really high altitude objects, even though it is analog. It does take a video, so I'll go ahead and stop here and uh, continue on if I catch anything tonight.